very kind offer. Hello, I'm Michael. Hi. Hello. Hi. You don't really like the front seats, right? <laughs> the front row. So it's, it's, I, I feel like in school. <laughs> Come on. You, I, it's, I, it's, I have that bad habit from long time back. Oh, wow. I, I have this habit also from school. <laughs> so it's just. Aaron, Aaron will help to sit in the first row just to make it more ergonomical. <laughs> By the way, he, he can speak about PHP to get a plushie <laughs> one other time because he is with us for three days of our time in Singapore for JetBrains team. So he is listening to our presentation every day, like from the morning till the evening, and then also our talks in the, uh, in the restaurants. So <laughs> yeah, so you, you will learn it. So I'm Michael. I'm actually in marketing and JetBrains, but it should not scare you because I've been a developer for 10 years. Uh, before switching to your more like business marketing roles, and I was working on the PHP Storm team as a product manager, um, working with the team on uh, what what's happening there and so on. Now I'm switching to more other strategic stuff, but I'm still in touch with PHP Storm team. So they taught uh, they taught me what do they have new, and I'm going to show it to you today, along with some of the tips and tricks, and more generic one, not only what's new but also some useful stuff which you will be able to use in your day-to-day uh, -day development. So who of you here use PHP Storm already? Raise your hand. Okay. Okay. So Aaron, you use PHP Storm. Good. Did you pay for a license? Yeah, I guess no, I, I'm uh, Aaron. <laughs> 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 okay, so as, as the first thing I want to show you is something which is not PHP Storm directly, but it's related. So do you know Toolbox app? That's application I'm, I open right here. Raise your hand if you know Toolbox app. Okay, cool. So you already probably learned something today because uh, that's the app which helps you manage your, all the applications from JetBrains, all the desktop tools um, in a single application. Uh, well, it's one of the things we ship for free. Uh, you don't need to pay for it extra, so you just uh, go here and you can install different tools. So in this case, for example, I, well, I have two PHP Storms to 018.3, which is because I was using early access program. And early access program is something which we uh, release about two months in advance before the major release of the product. We start releasing those kind of nightly builds every two weeks for PHP Storm, I believe. And uh, you get a grasp of all their f features which introduced there uh, as you use them. So for that, for example, you, you can use Toolbox to roll back because sometimes they're not very stable. So right now, PHP Storm is stable. So it's got its release of 2018.3, I believe, last week. Um, yeah, so I updated to a stable version. We also have the nightly one and there are all the tools I can manage here. So a couple of things which we have new in the, in the Toolbox app is a way to, uh, which one? Yeah, install updates automatically. Uh, so before you would still have to go to your Toolbox and do this installation of the updates. Now you can just do it automatically from, uh, from here. Just set this setting for your tool and there, then it will be updated. Another thing is related to the projects, and uh, here you get a list of your projects and basically see what tool have you used in order to work with this project. For me, I use IntelliJ, PHP Storm, PyCharm, and WebStorm. So for me, it really makes sense to kind of uh, have a, this high-level overview of uh, um, what tool did I use to uh, open this project. And here you also can add those to favorites and they're hide from the Toolbox app. So if you work with three projects, mostly you just add them to favorites, and then you can manage them from the Toolbox. OK, let's go to PHP Storm. And before looking into what's new, I, I want to show you a couple of good ways to explore what's happening. The first one is located in the menu where nobody ever goes. It's in the help, and it's called Productivity Guide. Do you know about it? Productivity Guide is something very similar to what I'm going to show you today. It's a collection of tips and tricks which you can learn right from here together with statistics of usage of different tools by the ID. So here, for example, we see, well, I actually don't use PHP Storm that often. I mostly use IntelliJ. But for today's presentation, I'm using PHP Storm. Uh, and there, here I have that, OK, four years ago, I used Go to Symbol. And one week ago, I used recent files pop up. But I never have been going through recent changes, for example. And it's going to tell you that you never used it. And you will see information about how to use this feature. So that's very convenient to explore. And also, if you would do it on the Friday evening with your friends or colleagues, then you can also compare how many 
possible bugs have where PHP Storm prevented it from, or from how many uh, code, uh, from how many typing um, characters, characters typing did it uh, uh, did it prevent you from? As again, it's about productivity, and you can uh, compare with your friends, and there, somebody who has the most does not need to pay for the beer or for pizza. Okay, so f to navigate around the ID, you probably already know this one. It's let's move it here. It's double shift. So search everywhere. We have it for quite some time. And by the way, in order not to ask me what, how it's called or what is their hotkey, in the bottom, we have a presentation assist plugin, which is going to tell you what is their uh, hotkey for uh, Windows Linux, because I don't know. So if you use it, if you use it here during the presentations, uh, that might be very convenient for you as well. Just let me show you plugins. Presentation, presentation assistant. So this free plugin basically shows you your hotkey every time you press it in the ID. And by the way, that's our new marketplace or uh, plugins repository right in the ID. We revoked their user interface, and now it gets you featured plugins and their better search, which is created on their backend and a, lo a lot of other things. So you can find plugins easier here, and you can do all their tagging for example, with completion JavaScript and get very quick results. So we revoked, uh, we reworked this part. So yeah, I was showing you the search everywhere and before we had it, but we also had uh, individual, um, individual windows and in searches for classes, files, symbols, and actions. Now it's all merged into a single search everywhere. So you just start typing. And if you would like to filter by classes, files, symbols, or actions, uh, you basically use tab in order to navigate between those. And there, in this case, you can find anything everywhere in the ID. So you don't need to use uh, individual dialogs anymore. If you use this uh, navigate to file and other actions, you would still be navigating to, their, uh, to the dedicated filtering already without, uh, without need to um, choose the tab here. And to set the mood, we can set the background. So you know there are a lot of things in the IDE which is hard to find and there for that we created this search everywhere which basically helps you do a lot of amazing things in the IDE. So for example right now I'm setting a unicorn as a background image and instead of the unicorn you can bring pictures of your family, friends, relatives so that you can stay in the office with your ID longer and don't need to go home, for example. <laughs> <laughs> you have pictures of your family, of your spouses, of partners. <laughs> for the whole day, you don't, you don't need this like, stand it next to a computer. You can just do it here. So you see your wife, is it not Aaron, come on. It's recorded. <laughs> Okay, not to distract Aaron, we are gonna clear this unicorn and I will stay, just leave this plain background. Nothing, nothing happened, Aaron. Okay, so I'm show you, I'm showing you a couple of things already. And everything you do in the ID, well, almost everything you can do in the ID, you can do with hotkeys or shortcuts. And by the way, do you know why is it command one and where one is coming from? One is coming from this here. It's one next to the project. That's how I know that it's uh, toggling the project tool window. S structure, for example, is seven. So with command seven, I can just toggle and uh, um, toggle this tool window and then close it. Uh, so in this case, again, I don't need to touch those with the mouse. So you, you don't need to use the mouse to navigate. If you want to na navigate between tabs, you can use command shift brackets, or even better, that's my favorite, it's going through the recent files. Well, let's get more files. <coughs> okay. So with those, we just go through recent files. And you can also search right in the tool window, the same way it would work in the project. I just start typing TS, and then with the arrow up and arrow down, I can just navigate through those. <laughs> Very quick search. OK. 
Okay, so another thing which had been produced in their uh, newest version is double control, which which uh, stays for run anything. So it's basically from their uh, creators of search everywhere. Now we have also run anything with double control. They really love those double shortcuts. Uh, and with that, you basically can run uh, projects, recent projects, and also run debug configurations. Uh, so I can open projects, and they're, well, in this case, I don't have run debug configurations. If I would have them, I would also be able to just go through them and run. For Maven, Gradle, and, and so on, you would, they would all basically contribute to this run anything. And there, you would be able to do it from a single, uh, single dialog as well. So you don't, you don't need to go around the IDE. Then a few new actions, which are now available in, their, in the IDE itself. So this is basically opening the recent, uh, recent projects. Of course, before, you can do something like that. And you get this list. Now you can map it to the shortcut. Or just go from here. Again, without mouse, and then just uh, open the recent project. And there, here, it also gets you to manage their projects. Which is basically the welcome screen. So before, you, we used to have it only on the welcome script, uh, screen. And their interesting thing here is that we can create project groups. I believe this should not disappear, but it disappears. Uh, still, we can move a couple of demos to their uh, to their manage um, to the group Singapore. Yeah, now we have sing Singapore demo. So basically, for better organization of your project, if you have a lot, then it would help you to organize those uh, right here, not only from the welcome screen. Uh, screen. Then another thing which we work quite a lot is related to, to the color schemes. So now we have cobalt, one more. So we have a um, high contrast uh, theme in the ID. So uh, that basically helps for people with their, um, for example, color, color blindness and other uh, challenges or visual challenges. So basically, we worked a lot to introduce this, this theme into the ID so that it's, it's much easier for them to see what's happening. Because otherwise, for example, if you have a color blindness, uh, you cannot recognize like uh, green and red. So using the ID and all the inspection results basically gives you a lot of trouble. So the high contrast theme uh, introduces some special things uh, and special colors uh, so that it's distinguishable and it follows uh, special accessibility guidelines. And in addition to that, we also fixed there a lot of issues related to the screen readers. Uh, so now screen readers would work uh, in the ID. And there, if you ever use RESTful API tester, which would look like that. Have you seen it? Raise your hand. It's like Postman in the ID. We have it for about two years. It's a shame that not all of you know about it. But good thing, you don't need to learn this one because we already deprecated it. So what you would do before is that you would just get an HTTP method. And let's say, OK, uh, go to JetBrains.com, PHPStorm, then run it. And the REST client is going to connect to JetBrains.com and uh, get us the re response. But you would basically use it in order to work with their, uh, with their RESTful APIs, and you would be getting a response there. But we did not deprecate it altogether. We converted it into a different thing. And there, this different thing, I lost it. Where is it? OK. Let's just do a new one. So yeah, and a new RESTful client is fully uh, code-based. So you can do stuff like that. So you would just start typing, and then you, uh, with the code, you define all of that. Then you run it, and there you will get results right here. Well, of course, with all their headers and so on. Uh, but it's going to be a real file. So it, all the highlighting, all the formatting, and so on, it will be saved as a temporary file. Even better, if you run it a second time,
or even if you changed it. We can compare it, I think, to this one. Yeah, okay, let's, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, yeah, basically, if you would be working with your REST API and you change something in the IPA, in, in the IP, in the IPA, I'm, I'm thinking about beers already. <laughs> in the API, <laughs> uh, in the API, if you change something, then basically uh, you will see the difference here in the standard difference viewer. And again, that's a real file right here. You would be able to see what's happening, and there you would also be able to see the history if you would like to go through it. And then it would work for any file, either HTTP or REST file extension, and there you can save those to the project and there give it to your colleagues as well. And there, the way I actually created this file is their Scratch file. So maybe some of you don't know about it, but it, Scratch files is an amazing way to create temporary files. So temporary files are needed, for example, when you get some answer from Stack Overflow and you don't need to destroy your project right away because it's not going to be the first Stack Overflow result you're testing and you need to go through 10 of them to figure out which one works. Uh, so you basically create this uh, Scratch file and there. It's, tempor <coughs> it's temporary file, which gets you all the completion, all the debugging, um, all the stuff which is uh, normally available in the ID, and you just start working here, running, debugging, and then if you think that it should be copied to your project, then you copy it to the project. But otherwise, it's going to be uh, just a temporary file, which is not going anywhere in your project, just saved to there at the temporary directory. Another thing which is new, um, is multi, uh, where is it? No, 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 not too early. I'm trying to f uh, remember uh, which one is that. Okay, so, oh yeah, now it works. Um, so this button, is used to activate multi-line uh, multi search and replace. So basically, uh, you can use this one or um, command shift enter. That's their shortcut I did not learn yet uh, because it's new. So basically what you do here is that you do the first line and then you can do multi-line search and multi-line replace. So before it would be possible only with a single line. So that's again something which is coming in 2018.3. Then you probably know the postfix templates, postfix completion. So it's basically a predefined template uh, which you can um, post, annotate your uh, expression, and then you, for example, write e -E set and their tab after some variable, and it would work something like that. Yeah, and uh, then it's going to be um, wrapped into if. But it's not about postfix, it's about the way that you now can add postfix completion. So before, uh, you could on only work with about 20 predefined PHP postfix completion which JetBrains put, put there. And now you can create your own and you can create new PHP template for their postfix completion and there you can just use your own. Uh, so uh, another way to do something similar is called live, a live templates. And it's not, it's just not post annotation, it's some uh, keywords. And there here you could add your own for quite a, lo a quite long time. So there are two ways to do that. This code snippets, uh, either fix completion or live templates. Both now support custom things, so you can just start adding those. So then something new. So we have this uh, to-do function functionality for quite a long time. So basically what it does is that if you use some keyword um, here in the command, it's going to record it and uh, okay, current file and show you in a special view that uh, you have this to-do active in your code. And uh, it's going to be the same in the, um, in the commit di dialog, for example. So you do check to-do before you commit, and then you will basically uh, see that in there in a special dialog. Do you want to fix those before you commit or not? 
so now something which apparently has been very popular request is to allow our um, multi-line to do. And it was not possible. So I could not write that Aaron has to fix it. Now I can. So I just need to add indentation, and there, then you can add more lines, and there, all of them are going to be created as a single to-do item. In fact, in addition to to-do, you can do a lot of other stuff. For example, here I have my custom to-do item defined as WTH, which shouts at you. So you can just create your own and then share it with your colleagues. OK, multi-line to-do commands. Uh, what else? OK, for the VCS, there are a few things for the VCS which are available. Version control. Uh, let's find some. It works in the side-by-side -side viewer. Here in the commit dialog, you can do partial commits. So if you change the file in some change log, before you would have to do, um, you would have to commit the whole file, but now you can choose with these checkboxes what part of their changes you have to, you should submit in this current uh, commit. So you can basically omit a couple of those, and then they will be kept in your uh, change log. And then on the next step, you probably want to add some more. Uh, for example, you've seen that you missed something, but you still want to commit the first step. So you can select those uh, right in the commit dialog before submitting. Then for the VCS, oh yeah, for the VCS we also have uh, a couple of things around GitHub. So the first one is about the um, is about the accounts you have there. So if you have your work and private accounts, now you can add them to a single instance of the ID. Before you would not be able to do it um, um, globally, or for a current project, you would have to change your uh, you would have to change your account every time you need to switch. Now you can add more accounts, in fact, as many as you like. So if you have a lot of personas on the web posting to different GitHub repositories, you can just add them to a single ID. And there, by the way, now it works really well with their two-factor authorization. So it's going to go to your GitHub, and it's going to obtain a permanent token for you so that you don't need to um, write your uh, login and password every time. And then the team on the version control system side did a lot of magic around pull requests. So before, for, for many years, in fact, you, you had an opportunity to submit new pull requests to, to GitHub. Now, in addition to that, you can view them right here. So it basically connects to GitHub, and it's going to show you all the information, what it has about their uh, pull requests, even with some uh, descriptions. And it's going to get the changes. And it, you can view them right here. So it's very convenient uh, to review the pull request to your project. But right now, you cannot yet merge those. Uh, you can, of course, check out the revision and then merge it to master. But it's not going to update the pull request. So it, it's not like merge uh, on GitHub yet. And uh, I believe in the next version, they're going to approach this uh, problem as well. So they basically started from read-only methods, which is view the, the pull request, get, their, get all the source code, go, get the revision and so on. But uh, in the next uh, version, they're going um, to bring their right actions, uh, merge this particular pull request as well. So that's what they are going to bring. Then it will take some time. OK. So annotations. They reviewed a lot of different stuff here in the annotations. So for example, uh, you can do ignore white spaces and the text movements in the file. And there, right from here, you can go to their detect, uh, to their uh, VCS log. And there, one thing I like a lot is the history up to here on some particular file. So it's going to get you the history of in every branch where the file has been touched. It's going to show you what have been the changes. Because sometimes it's very convenient for, for example, deleted files, and you want to go through the whole history who's been touching it, and so on. And there, the annotated option has been reworked, so it's now much faster. Because in the bigger projects, it was quite a hassle to get annotation for uh, right in the editor here. OK. 
Okay, so then I wanted to show you something around their inspections. So you probably know that in every new version of PHP Storm we introduce a lot of inspections. That's those inspections which shout at Symfony right here telling that they have quite a lot of different results. Um, and there, in order to explore what, ex what, in, what in, in new inspections we have, you can just go here to the inspections and there use new Intel 10.3. That's a new filter we have. And it's gonna show you what are the new inspections uh, we introduced. Well, in this version we introduced mostly for uh, web, not for PHP, but here, uh, it's gonna show you different uh, different stuff for different versions. So we are gonna annotate our next new inspections with this filter as well, so you will be able to see them. Another thing which is not um, which is not finished yet, uh, but gonna be finished very soon uh, in the next version is the activity monitor. But you can already use it to investigate some issues with the ID. So, for example, sometimes we get feedback that something is working too slow in the ID, and we need to get more information from you. And in this case, activity monitor is very similar to what you have in your uh, in your operating system or in your um, Chrome, for example. So you can figure out what plugin uses all this. Uh, CPU and so on to understand what, what is slowing it down because sometimes that's not the ID which is which is slow It's there are some plugin which is doing some extensive computations or they have some bugs uh, Which makes this plugin available outside of the time you actually use using this plugin. So that might be quite quite painful in general But we are going to rework the UI Because right now UI is not pretty then you probably already use Docker integration for your for your uh, for your products. Docker integration is in works for a couple of years already in JetBrains, and there we introduce a lot of things here. And there, if you don't use it, you should start. And there is actually, in fact, a Kubernetes plugin as well, which was released some time ago. And there, you can use Docker, Kubernetes, and all of that right in PHP Storm. Uh, so here, I can manage containers, images, and there, uh, see all their variables and their. Um, do their additional port bindings, get the logs, and so on. So it already works very well for PHP, so you should definitely try that if you, if you haven't tried it. It's not something which is coming in their, in their 2018.3, but Docker support for PHP has been added a couple of versions ago, but they rework it all the time and they add additional stuff there. So basically, you would be able to use remote interpreters there and their, all their debugging and so on. Uh, so y you can connect to Docker and work with it. Okay, and then structural search and replace. Uh, yeah, search structurally. Probably you don't know about this feature, but it's amazing. It's a thing which allows you to your uh, the very complicated reg exp so reg regular expression based um, search and replace in your project. So, uh, for example, maybe you have some, we have some example. Actually, have it. I have it in IntelliJ. I have a good, uh, good example in, in IntelliJ. Let me show you there, it there. Uh, so what structure search and replace does is that uh, it goes to your project uh, and you can define very complicated pattern of uh, search. For example, you can define some variables there. And in this case, uh, when it's going to find, uh, find uh, this code chunk, it's going to replace it, moving the variables and they're changing the structure of the code and so on. So I'll show it uh, to you because I don't have a good example for PHP yet, but I do have one for Java. as soon as it loads. Of course, it's going to index. Almost there. Okay, 
so replace structurally. So for example, this one, uh, we have a search template, try catch, and there we have a couple of variables here, code and exception. And in this case, uh, we can manipulate, manipulate that uh, and there uh, create a replace template, moving some of their variables from, uh, uh, from place to place and there then we can also reformat and there we can do that here and it's going to get us this nice representation where we would be able to uh, find all of those and make the replacement so it's basically advanced find and replace you can use it for a lot of things and there you can even create your custom inspections based on that um, and the last thing I wanted to show you, because Aaron signals me that I don't have much time, right, Aaron? No, you don't. You don't. You do signal me, or you don't. You do signal me. Okay. Uh, so the debt basis. Um, it's not something new, but I, that's probably my favorite feature in uh, PHP Storm and IntelliJ altogether. Because I used to, I used to be a web developer, and I would be using something like SQL Yoke or MySQL Workbench, or even oh my gosh, PHP My Admin, uh, to manage all my debt bases which sometimes is not ideal. So in all their JetBrains IDs, you have uh, this amazing database functionality, which basically gets you all, all of the things these tools bring you, like all the data, all the queries, and so on. So if, if we go here to the console and do select, it gets you all the completion. Amazing, right? So you can run it from here and so on. But it would be amazing to have that in PHP as well. Okay, let's screw this file. Let's say SQL query, select something from, it, it understood that I have SQL and I have connection to the database here. and it gets me all the tables, all the columns, and so on. Uh, in fact, it's not necessarily automatic. Sometimes it is not, I have to tell you. And in this case, you can do something which I do for JSON. Let's say we want to have JSON here. We do Alt-Enter. We do inject language or reference. And that's what, what it, it basically can do for any language you have in PHP Storm. In this case, we are going to do it for JSON. Even better. We are going to edit JSON fragment in a separate window. Here we go. And uh, if we would do that for this, let's make it more SQL like. So it's going to take care of all their, um, all their um, uh, breaking lines and so on. Uh, so it's, it's basically very good for your SQL queries. And there, from here, you, you can also run it right in the console, if I would have it correctly configured. And there, you get the dialect. If you would like to limit it only to your MySQL, yeah. Um, because it was not sure what kind of dialect is that. So yeah, that's injections. You can inject any um, any languages and their regexps, reg, regular expression. Even has a special checker. As soon as we inject regular expressions, we can check them. So you uh, you you put the regular expression and then you put the sample a sample and then it tells you whether it matches or not. Uh, so that's additional stuff we have. So you don't need to go and Google for uh, how to test my regular expression without paying for the subscription. So, and last new thing I wanted to show you, um, just remember that there are some new things. Um, now we can do this one, and then we do con uh, control dot, and it's gonna complete their first matching statement so that you already can, uh, can start choosing the method of control dot. Well, I don't have completion here, but if I would, 
that's default request. I'm, I'm not very big on Drupal. So yeah, basically you get this completion faster and there, by the way, this cool thing is, con is called font ligatures. For that, you need to have Fira code font, a special font for uh, software developers, and you need to enable font ligatures. Of course, it's gonna be saved to your VCS as like Drupal equal, um, but here you will see it is a nice, uh, is a nice character. So with that, I hope you learned some tips and tricks during this short session. I hope you will be able to bring it back to your office and use it to be more productive with PHP Storm. Thank you. <laughs> Go to symbol. Uh, well, I. I did it through uh, their search everywhere, but let me find their shortcut. Okay, let's do it here. Command Alt O. Command Alt O. Oh, okay, no. You need to be a class. Um, oh no. Yeah, it was, yeah, option, command, option, O. Uh, but I would normally do double shift and just filter. Now it's easier, with, at least for me, because I, I never remember those, like extra for files, classes, symbols. I, I just don't. <laughs> I feel the pain. Yeah. <laughs> so double shift search everywhere really works magic. <laughs>